Hey coders and welcome to episode 3 of our script service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about the onEdit trigger. So the method onEdit fires whenever a user edits a spreadsheet in it. And when I say edit I mean changes the value of a cell. So this method again will not work for say documents or slides or forms or anything like that. It's only for, it's reserved for spreadsheets. Nonetheless, it's an extremely powerful trigger for those sheets. So let's look at an example for, of both the simple trigger and the insolvable trigger in the code right now. Let's first examine the method on edit through a simple trigger. So again, simple triggers are called from a bounded script and here is our spreadsheet container. You can see that I have added a few data points here. So one of the use cases that I used to impl implement this on edit method for is say we wanted to mark a timestamp whenever a cell was modified. So say I was coming in here and I it was I wanted to change the value of A2 and I would say something like David. And if we wanted to record when this when this change or when this edit occurred, then we would need a timestamp right here. And one way we could do that is by using the on edit method. So let me just delete that for now. And let's go back into our bounded script. So again, with simple triggers, you need to make sure that they are spelled exactly as, as they are reserved function names. So again, this needs to be capital E, this needs to be lowercase uh, o, and needs to be spelled exactly like this on edit. Great, so now this is telling app script, run this function whenever this spreadsheet has a cell that is modified. Great, so now we'll save it and we will write the actual code body. So let's say spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet and we'll say get active sheet and then we'll say get range. So here's the problem. We want to we want to record all of our data in this column right here which is column 5 so actually let's just type that in right now. Column 5 but then the row is going to vary based on which row we change. So if we if we change row 8, we want that timestamp to be to be showing right here in E8. And if we change say row 6, again E6. So, this is where the event parameter can come in handy. We can just pass in this and then we'll get data on what cell was actually modified. So now we can use this in the row column. So this is actually going to be our event parameter, but it has a lot of different uh, data points in there. It has a lot of different values and keys and stuff like that and properties. So what we want is the range property. And this is actually very powerful because now we have the object range. So we can use all the methods and all the properties on the class of range. But what we're going to use is the method get row. So now this is getting the row of whatever was edited. And, and then also the column is going to be 5, that's fine. And so we want to set value now of this row and this column. And we're just going to give it a JavaScript date. Great. So now if we hit save, again, we do not need to run it. But if we come back into here, we don't even have to refresh it. We could just say something like David hit enter, and then now here is our timestamp. And it, and it shows up in E2 just like how we wanted. If we click into it more, we can see that this is the JavaScript date. It's the 23rd today, and it's 324, uh, which is exactly 1524. If we come down all the way to like 15, and we say something like Weiss, then now the timestamp will, will appear in the same row. So that is pretty cool. Um, let's go over to the standalone script. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you delete it, say, um, so, okay, so let's see. So this is 1524 right now. And if we delete it, then this timestamp will get updated and now see it's 1525. So that's cool. So if, it, if you add data or if you take away data, then it is going to run that function on edit. Anyways, now let's go into the standalone script. So let's try to do that exact same process, except for now in a standalone script. So this is our spreadsheet again. We're going to, we have added this column timestamp. So if we, if we modify any of these cells in here, it will uh, populate a time for when that was modified. 
So let's go back in here again. This is going to be an installable trigger now because it's a standalone script. So we're going to have to access the script app and we want a new trigger. The trigger name is going to be this one right here, timestamp. So let's just say quote, uh, quote timestamp. And we'll say for spreadsheet, here it is. And then the key again is going to be our ID for the spreadsheet. Again, on edit, it, it only works for spreadsheets. So it won't work for say if you if you have a document. I mean, you, you can kind of tell that would be, get a little uh, excessive if if an on edit trigger ran every single time you changed the words or anything the letters of a document and maybe that's why they only do it for spreadsheets but yeah this on uh, this edit on edit trigger is only going to work for spreadsheets so let's get our on edit and then we'll hit dot and then we'll hit create and that will set up our trigger after we save it and we select the function setup trigger and then we run it. Great, so now our trigger is set up. So now uh, this function right here, timestamp is going to run whenever we, whenever we change any of the cells in here. So again, it's, it, this is exactly the same as how we had it before with the bounded script. And so now let's just test it. If we just say something like A, then here's our timestamp, wonderful, 1527. And then if we say B, if we say C, if we say D, it's just going to all populate just like this. And even if we erase all of these, it will repopulate. The funny thing is, is even if you delete this, then it will it will repopulate that timestamp. If you don't want that, you can, you know, you can build out this function a bit more, make some conditionals and some logic and stuff like that. But anyways, guys, this is on edit, an extremely powerful method. I hope you use it a lot, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.